One of the most common questions I've had since I've recorded my WSL version two videos is, David, okay, so I've got this virtual machine, lightweight virtual machine such as Ubuntu running within WSL version two on a Windows 10 computer, but how do I access that virtual machine remotely? It looks like the virtual machine is using some random or weird IP address. How do I actually connect to that virtual machine remotely? That's what I'm gonna show you in this video. I'm gonna show you a simple method to allow remote access to the virtual machine, and then I'll show you some documentation on GitHub and some scripts that you could use if you prefer, which allows this to be more automated. Okay, let's get started. Now in this example, I'm doing everything on this Windows 10 laptop. WSL version two is enabled on this Windows 10 laptop running Windows 10 Home Edition. I'm going to, however, control that laptop using VNC, and I'll also show you how I can connect directly to the virtual machine, the Ubuntu virtual machine running within WSL version two on that laptop from my Mac. Okay, so let's have a look at the documentation from Microsoft. They have a section in their WSL documentation that discusses accessing a WSL2 distribution from your local area network or LAN. So when using WSL version one, if your computer was set up to be accessed by your LAN, then applications that run within WSL version one could be accessed from the LAN as well. So that's what a lot of people expected with WSL version two, but that's not the case. So this isn't the default case in WSL version two, it uses a virtualized ethernet adapter with its own unique IP address. Currently, to enable this workflow, you need to go through the same steps as you would with a regular virtual machine. They are looking to improve this. They also don't support WSL distributions that only use IPv6 addresses. So that once again has caused a lot of confusion, but let me show you how to get this working. So what I'll do here is open up Windows Terminal that runs PowerShell by default, but I can connect to my Ubuntu installation. So as an example, if I searched for Ubuntu here, you can see that I've got an Ubuntu app. I'm simply using Windows Terminal to access that Ubuntu virtual machine. So in PowerShell, as an example, if I type WSL-L-V, I can see that I've got an Ubuntu virtual machine using WSL version two running on my Windows 10 computer. My Windows 10 computer is a Windows Home Edition computer. You don't need Windows Professional to use WSL version two. Okay, let's have a look at the IP address. So I could use the command IP address to view the IP address of this virtual machine. Now you may prefer to use grep. So rather than seeing all the information, grep for ethernet zero. This is the IP address of the Ubuntu virtual machine running within WSL version two. That's different to my Windows computer. If I open up a command prompt and type ipconfig, I can see the IP address of my wireless network adapter on that Windows 10 computer. So this is the IP address of Windows, and this is the IP address of the Ubuntu virtual machine. So I should be able to ping the Ubuntu virtual machine from Windows, which I can. So I can ping it from my local Windows host. That's the Windows 10 operating system running on the laptop. But on my Mac, so this is a terminal running on my Mac, I should be able to ping the Windows computer, so 192.168.132, so that's the Windows computer, but I won't be able to ping the Ubuntu host because I have no route to that network. Basically, the Ubuntu host is connected virtually to the Windows host, and the Windows host is natting its IP address. So other hosts don't know about the Ubuntu host. It's being natted by the Windows computer. So we're gonna change that. On the Windows computer, I can open up a remote desktop and I can connect to localhost port 3390, or I should be able to connect to the IP address of that Ubuntu host. 
Just need to make sure my IP address is correct. So 172.23.239.4, I should be able to connect to that Ubuntu host and log in using remote desktop. So again, this is the Ubuntu host, but I can't access this device with this IP address from outside, as in from my local area network. I can access it from my Windows computer because it's running on my Windows computer. My Windows computer has knowledge of that virtual machine. So if I go to control panel as an example, go to network and internet, network and sharing center, look at my adapter settings, I can see this virtual network interface card for WSL. And if I look at IP addresses, I can see that I have an IP address in the same subnet as the Ubuntu virtual machine. This is using a slash 20 mask. So 255.255.240.0, these two devices are on the same subnet. Logically, there's a cable from the Ubuntu virtual machine to the Windows operating system. And then Windows is connected to the wireless network. But devices on my local area network, including my Mac, don't know about this network. This network is not being advertised onto the local area network. So I need to do some kind of routing or do something to make this work. So at the moment, I can connect to the Ubuntu virtual machine using remote desktop on Windows. But if I try and connect to 192.168.1.132, which is the Windows computer, using this port 3390, I'm not able to do that because I'm not allowing connections from the wireless network through Windows to this virtual network that's connected to the Ubuntu host. Okay, so that doesn't work. So what we need to do now is basically run a single command using netsh, and we're gonna do a port proxy of IP version four to IP version four we are going to listen to port 3390. I configured the Ubuntu virtual machine to use port 3390 for XRDP. Have a look at this video if you want to see how I did that. We are going to allow connections to any IP address. Port that we're going to connect to is 3390 on the Ubuntu host. Now, when you reboot your PC, the IP address changes. So this is the IP address that that virtual machine was using previously. I'm gonna change that to this IP address, which is the IP address that the virtual machine is using at the moment. So I'm gonna run PowerShell as an administrator, allow it to make changes, and then I'm simply gonna paste that command in to allow proxying from any IP address on port 3390 to my internal host on port 3390. Okay, so let's test that. I'm gonna connect using my Mac to 192.168.1.132 port 3390, which is the IP address of the Windows computer. Double click on that and notice I get prompted to log in. So I'm gonna put in my username and my password. And what I've done now is connect to the Ubuntu virtual machine running within WSL version two on that Windows 10 computer. So just to prove the point again, IP address, grep, ethernet zero. Notice this is the IP address of my Ubuntu host running within WSL version two. I have connected from my Mac through the Windows 10 laptop to the virtual machine running within WSL version two. I'm connecting to the Ubuntu virtual machine once again within WSL version two within Windows 10. The Windows 10 computer is basically proxying the connection from the wireless network onto the WSL virtual network. So there you go. That's the command that you need. Now in this case, I've already set up firewall rules to permit that traffic. So if you haven't done that, it may not work. So go to advanced settings in your Windows Defender firewall. Now, depending on how you've configured your firewall, you'll need to allow traffic through your firewall. 
So under inbound rules, create a new rule for a port, so TCP or UDP port, and allow specific ports like 3390 in my example, and I'm gonna allow that connection and click next. And I'm gonna allow that for all domains at the moment. You may wanna restrict this and not allow public connections. I'll give it a name, WSL3390, and click finish. So I've created this rule, WSL3390. So under protocols and ports, you can see that that port has been allowed. The reason why it was working previously is I already had that port number listed under WSL2 firewall unlock properties. That was a rule that was already created to permit traffic. If it doesn't work in your case, then make sure that you've enabled your firewall to allow the relevant port number, 3390 or 3389, whatever port numbers you want to that virtual machine. That's okay, but what happens if the IP address changes? You'll have to add this command every single time the IP address changes. Now on GitHub, this issue is documented under issue 4150, and here's a TCP workaround. So someone's describing the issue, and then further down, someone created a script. So here's a bunch of explanation, and then here's a script that someone created to allow certain ports through the firewall. And this is why I had those rules in my firewall rules because I ran the script. Well, I edited the script and then ran it. So you can create NAT rules using this and add exceptions to your firewall rules using the script. Now someone has updated this because this ifconfig command doesn't work by default on Ubuntu. So further down here, someone makes the point of using IP address rather than using ifconfig. So do this rather than ifconfig. Another person, Shane, has actually created WSL2 hacks, and he's created an application that automatically does this for you. Now, I haven't tested this, so I don't know how well it works. I've simply used manual configurations and the script that's available here on GitHub. So the advantage of using the script is if your IP address changes, it will just automatically update things so that you can still access your virtual machine. Now, you use those scripts at your own risk, obviously. If you're unsure, then just use this netsh command to allow connections from a specific port number to a specific IP address and do that manually. Now, something else to be aware of with regards to your firewall. At the moment, I can't ping google.com from my WSL Ubuntu virtual machine. And that's because my firewall is blocking that traffic. So as an example, if I turn off my firewall, I can ping google.com from that virtual machine. Be careful with your firewall. Basically, Windows has got this firewall that's either permitting or denying traffic to your WSL virtual machine. So you've got to make sure that you have the firewall rules set up to permit or deny traffic. Okay, I'm hoping this helps you, hoping that this has answered the question of how to get remote access to WSL virtual machines from your local area network, as an example. You basically have to set up a proxy to allow your Windows 10 computer to proxy connections from your wireless network or your physical network onto the WSL version 2 network. I'm David Bombal. I want to wish you all the very best.